Hello everybody, this is Anthony. I'm going to be talking to you about discernment of spirits. Um, just to continue talking about just the different effects of grace that we've con- con- consistently called gifts of the spirit. And basically what they are, are the effects of grace and that anyone can operate in these things. It's It's very simple. So, we're going to talk about discernment of spirits and when I first started looking into this and and really investigating this I I honestly didn't know what to think because everybody talks about discerning evil spirits right and it's very simple to discern an evil spirit if you really think about it as you can see its character you can see its nature you can see the evidence of it just like you have fruit of the spirit of the Holy Spirit, you have fruit of a, an evil spirit, and you can see the destruction and 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 the stealing and the lying and everything that goes along with an evil spirit. Uh, but as I've been walking with God, I begin to realize that it's actually discernment of spirits, uh, not evil spirits alone. And you begin to find that you can actually discern evil spirits. You can discern the human spirit which we have examples of what Jesus did where he knew their thoughts. He 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 knew the, what they were muttering. He knew ev- things that he wasn't supposed to know. You, you might say, well, the, isn't that a word of knowledge? But he was actually discerning the human spirit, which is interesting, right? And then there's also uh, the spirit of God or, or godly spirits um, or angelic, you know, encounters and stuff like that and so not to get into any weirdness but just plainly saying that god wants to give you discernment that you have your senses exercised to godliness so that you can know between good and evil and a lot of times we are very quick to um just say well that's an evil spirit or oh that's god and this is one of the things that the church has been missing the most out of, hey Joshua, um, out of everything that's going on in the church, the church is missing discernment of spirits. And you can look online, you can look up a lot of uh, major ministries and you can see their altar time. And you can tell that a lot of the manifestations that are going on aren't actually God. They're, they're evil spirits, but people just throw a blanket label and say, well, it's just the spirit of God that came on them and this is what it produced. But I don't see anywhere in scripture, anywhere that the Holy Spirit, because if it's by the spirit of God, I don't see anywhere where the Holy Spirit has people ripping each other's clothes off or, or being uncontrollable. In fact, you find that the fruit of the spirit is self-control. You know, isn't that interesting? Right? So, it's very important that we look at things from a scriptural point of view to talk about what we're seeing. We weigh it against scripture. Right? And it's not so we can attack people or anything like that, but so that you can easily identify, as the body of Christ, you can easily identify what's going on and how you need to operate, how you need to 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 conduct yourself in that place as a son of God. Now, what happens when you discern a spirit of God, you know, a heavenly spirit, let's put it that way. Um, You'll find that a lot of times it's just, I I, I can't really put a, a, a word to it. It's, you find yourself in awe. And, It's just amazing on how when God reveals himself, whether it's you're ministering to a stranger, uh, uh, an angel unaware, right? Um, By ministering to a stranger or whatever the case may be. I can guarantee you after you walk away from here, you're going to be in awe of the fact that, oh my gosh, like there was something different. I knew it. And we can see examples of this at the end of Luke, right? Jesus was walking with some of his disciples telling them, explaining to them about Christ from the very beginning all the way to his his resurrection 
and they didn't even recognize him. It wasn't until slightly afterwards that they began to recognize him. We're like, oh my gosh, that was him. Didn't our hearts burn within us that this was him, right? And so you can see, you can actually discern kindred spirits. I can tell you, if you just take time and you just ask God, God, help me discern my brothers in Christ. Now, this isn't going to flatter a whole lot of people, okay? Understand what I'm saying? But there's certain people that you you have the same spirit, meaning you have the spirit of God, right? And you immediately connect with like brothers. You understand what I'm saying? There's just this, this instant affinity where it doesn't matter how long you go. Or how much time lapses or, or what happens in life. You pick up where you left off immediately. And it's just diving straight into sharing about what God's doing. Or his word. Or you know something. And it's not that you're trying to be rude. And, and not take into consideration family and, and stuff like that. But it's just like you have this instant connection. Where you one for instance, me and a couple of my, my close friends, we we might be sharing on a certain topic and then God's telling them the same thing even though they're halfway world away, right? In a different perspective, in a different way, but it's the same thing. It's the same core. So it's it's just real interesting how God ties us together um, by... His spirit, now understand what I'm saying, it's all by His spirit, right? But He, he brings this affinity um, between us to where, you know, it's kind of hard to explain, okay? So there's there's some people that you meet, and even though they say, yes, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, there's not a real connection to, okay? I'm not saying that they're not believers. I'm not saying um, that... Um, with every believer, you can have this instant affinity to. Uh, that would be nice, right? Um, and we should be walking at that level. And no matter how strong the connection is or how weak the connection is, that we instantly can identify each other. It's like this. A great example. Walk into a restaurant and you just see somebody and you know they're a believer. You don't know how. You don't know why. You just know they're a believer. And you say, you know what? Can I can I just talk to you? You're, you're a believer, aren't you? You believe in Jesus Christ. You follow Jesus Christ. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. How'd you know? And it's not because they draw attention to themselves. It's not because you saw them praying for anybody. It's not because you saw them walking out the word of God. But they're just sitting there. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God resonates in you with them it's like a tuning fork right you hit one tuning fork you get it close to each other they both resonate and so you can see that this this happens on a regular basis whether we realize it or not and and it's it's amazing how god does this and so a lot of times when we we think of discernment spirits we're so hyper focused on discerning evil spirits that we miss the other two. We, we miss the human spirit and we miss the, the heavenly spirit, the Holy Spirit. And so this is what I want to bring out. And, and this is what I want to challenge you on is start trusting God to discern spirits. Not just evil spirits. Like I said, those are easy to discern. Right? Because we can see clearly in Scripture what exactly an evil spirit is. But when we, we start looking at the human spirit, the thoughts of man, right? It says, no one knows the thoughts of man except for the spirit of man who dwells in him. First Corinthians chapter 2. I've been learning so much from that chapter. And so when you look at it, it's, well, how did I know someone's thoughts? For instance, I... I was at a movie rental place when I was in Bible school, and my neighbor, 
um, who lived right next door to me, who was also a student. Uh, we went to to the movies to to you know grab some stuff and and talk and talk business. We were working on doing a magazine together, and um, so we're there. I'm standing in line, and I'm having premonition. I remember being there, right? And then I I looked at him and I'm like, oh my gosh, I I even know even know what you're thinking right now. And he was like, no way. There's no way you know what I'm thinking. I said, I can tell you what you're thinking. I go, well, right now it's too easy. You're thinking there's no way that I know that you're thinking and that if I could tell you what you were thinking before, um, something along these lines. I don't remember exactly, but it was like, if I could tell you what you were thinking before, then you you would be embarrassed or whatever. And, uh, and he was like, okay. I go, so let me tell you what you are thinking before. You are thinking about where you're, the next place you're going to score your pot from. And I've, I've never said these words exactly in public. So, um, And this guy just looked at me and goes, no, no, it's not true. Hey, Romina. And, and I'm like, oh, okay. And I just left it there, right? And I didn't say anything. I didn't have another discussion about it. We just, I just dropped it. And we just continued talking later on. So a mutual friend of ours comes over to the house and he's like, hey, what did you do to our friend? I said, I didn't do nothing. He goes, he's completely scared of you. And I was like, why? Why is he scared of me? And he says, because you were reading his thoughts. And I just couldn't help but chuckle. You know, I was like, well, he said, I, I wasn't reading his thoughts. And he was like, yeah, no, he was. He said you were reading his thoughts. So when I look at the scriptures and I see where Jesus knew the thoughts of the Pharisees, he knew the thoughts of his disciples or what they were muttering, even though he didn't hear them physically, he discerned it in the spirit, in the spirit, right? Whether he was discerning the spirit of man or he was by the Holy Spirit, um, that's up for interpretation. But the whole thing is, you can tell he was inter- he was he was discerning spirits. Hey Daniel, and so it's it's been really interesting because as I've been walking this out and been looking back, there's so many different things that God has brought me into and allowed me to encounter and allowed me to step into, and it's taken me a while to be able to um, kind of talk about this and, art- and articulate this. So that people can understand the importance of discerning spirits. For instance, I'm talking about heavenly spirit, discerning the heavenly spirit. Um, I was in, in Bible school again, and a close friend of mine, uh, we, we would always talk about scripture. We'd just walk and we would just ask questions back and forth and discuss um, what we believe God was saying and, and different things like that. And it, it got to the point where um, we were doing homework one day. And he was so moody. He was so moody, right? And and I just looked at him and was like, I go, just do your homework, man. Just finish what they want. No, no, I'm not, I won't do it. The, I, there's no way we have enough time to do this. And, and so he was giving all his excuses and everything. I was like, they just asked us to do it. Let's just get it done with. Um, at least write a page, do something, right? And uh, he was like, no, no. And I was just like, man, you're being so so carnal. You need to renew your mind, right? And I say that in my thoughts as I'm typing at a computer in his room because I didn't have one in my room. And it was just so funny because he just turns around really quickly and he was like, well, you can renew yourself right out of my room. <laughs> and everybody in the room, there's like five or six guys of, of, uh, there, and everybody turns around and just looks at him. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like he just heard my thoughts. Like how in the world do you know my thoughts? And whether he was, it was by the spirit of God, which I believe it is, or by him discerning the human spirit, it kind of caused us to to immediately put everything on hold and went outside and we started talking about it, um, which was very interesting uh, because it's like, how is that possible? We can look in scripture, we can see, where this, this was a common occurrence with anybody who walked around Jesus, who was around Jesus for any amount of time. So don't be afraid of it. Now, I want to challenge you to, to start asking God, believing God for this, 
so that you can step out into it and just see the amazingness of God and how how everything is simple. You, you don't have to like force it to happen. You just say, God, I want to begin to truly discern spirits at all times. I want to know if it's the human spirit. I want to know if it's the Holy Spirit. I want to know if it's a demonic spirit. Just let me know. I, I, I don't want to have to struggle or strive or try to figure things out. I just want to know exactly what you're saying and and, and discerning. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to pray until... No, no, no. Just go about your day. And as God starts highlighting things, as he starts bringing things to your attention or someone stands out or something, then you observe, right? And just observe, take notes, and, and get ready for what God's about to begin exposing. He's going to be exposing through the opening of your eyes, the opening of your mind. He's going to begin exposing things that you've always known. And for instance, um, kind of going back to discernment of evil spirits, I say this really easy to identify. I was I was discipling um, a lady who's a doctor, and she went to the post office to get her passport, right? And I thought it was so funny because... Um, we, she calls me right after she leaves the the passport place, and she's so upset. She's like so upset, and she's like, "Tell me, does God want His children to be mistreated and abused?" And it was like, "What are you talking about? I don't, I don't understand. Give me context here. What's going on?" And she's like, "I was just at the post office, and this lady was super nice and everything. She gets to me." And she has an attitude. She starts cussing me out. She flips out on me. For no reason at all. And I said, okay. And then she goes to the back. She comes back out. She ignores me. Goes to the next person. And is back to super nice. Friendly. And she goes, I had no idea what to do. The people around me were freaking out. They had no idea what to say or what to do. And I just started laughing. And she's like, what? I said, um do realize that was an evil spirit, right? And the evil spirit manifested on me. And she's like, oh my gosh, you're right. You're right. Oh man, I, I, I didn't notice it. I go, yeah, because you you allowed it to get personal and you, you it clouded your judgment because you felt attacked, right? And so then you're no longer discerning. You've stepped into the carnal as you're, uh, feeding the 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 carnal emotions of of the situation, and if I articulated that correctly or not. So, discernment of the spirits. Ask God for it. Believe that you have it. And start walking it out. So here in a bit, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off for a second. We're gonna come back. We're gonna continue lies we have all prayed, and also I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues. So we're going to share some testimonies, some stories, and, and different things from there. But um, uh, we might end up extending lies we have all prayed because I want to go thoroughly over some of the, the, the things that I've been pointing out in the last few weeks. All right, so bless you. Thank you. And we'll see you in a bit.